Welcome to the channel. So this is a video in response to a question I get asked a lot about how you set your flow or your extrusion multiplier or whatever you want to call it for your various filaments. Now it's important to note that you're going to want to do this process for pretty much every roll of filament you have. Um, I have found that if it's from the same vendor, it's the same type, same color, it, it generally the flow is going to be the same or at least relatively close. But you still want to go through this process, you know, again, for each and every filament that you have, because you will find it's going to be different and it's going to be different from printer to printer. Um, so, I mean, again, it's, it's really important that you check this you know, pretty much every time you go to use a, a spool. All right. So with that in mind, if you like this content, please like and subscribe and let's go ahead and get started with it. So. I'm in Prusa Slicer right now, and in here, you know, what we're talking about is called uh, the extrusion multiplier. Now, in order to do this test, all you really have to do is come in here and set uh, vase mode. That's, that's pretty much all you have to do, and then you'll be good to go. Now, once you get that set, then come into your main build plate area, right click, and then we're going to add a cube. Okay, now that we have our cube, we just need to resize it. So we want to uncheck our box for uniformity and set our X and Y to 40 and set our Z to 20. And this will be big enough for us to do our test with. Um, lots of people want to do this a lot smaller. I would recommend keeping it this way. Again, it should take like 10, 15 minutes to actually print this. Anyway, now you slice it and it should look just like this. So there shouldn't be a top, it should be single walled, um, a hollow cubed basically. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the sides of this thing. And so in order to do that, you need to know what your default width is supposed to be. It's going to be different depending on your slicer. So like in Prusa slicer, it is going to be set to 0.45. And that's the default for a Prusa slicer. But come in here and actually look and, and verify. If it's set to zero, like all of mine are here, then it's going to be 0.45. You know, again, that's the default for a Prusa slicer. Cura is different. Cura's default is 0.4. Orca slicer is different. So, you know, again, go and look at your actual profile and verify what it actually is set to. And if there's a value in here, when we go to do our measurements, that's what your value should be. That's what you're shooting for. You know, again, for Prusa Slicer, it's gonna be 0.45. That's the default. So let's go ahead and get this exported and we'll print it out. Okay, so before we actually print that, we're gonna come here in Cura, because I know a bunch of you run Cura and we are going to do basically the exact same thing we just did in Prusa Slicer, but we're going to do it in here. So I have my Kingroon KP3S Pro printer listed because um, that's what we're printing with. I'm using their default profile for that printer and the first thing we need to do is we need to look at our line width and here you can see it's set to 0 0.44 yours might be different so again just note down whatever your value is then we want to go and look at our flow and make sure our flow is set to 100 percent because that just makes the calculations easier for us and then next thing we need to do is we need to actually get a cube in here now in Cura, you know, it's not as simple as it is inside of Prusa Slicer because Prusa Slicer comes with default objects. Cura does not. So, you know, if we right click on the bed, we don't have anything that we can just drop in here. Luckily for us, though, there are um, lots of plugins. And one of those is part for calibration. Um, it's a great plugin. I would highly recommend it. And we want to go to add a cube. Make sure you do not do the calibration cube. You just want to add a cube, one at the top. Now we have our little block. We want to select it and then we need to resize it. 
you know, again, we're going to do just like we did in Precious Slicer. Make sure that uh, uniform is not set because we want independent sides. And we're going to do 40 on the X and Y and leave the 20 on the Z. Now, again, you know, lots of people want to make this smaller. Uh, don't, you know, do 40 by 40 by 20. Now, once we have that, we need to come back into our profile and then we're going to go to special modes and we're going to spiralize outer contour. And I don't, they used to just call it spiral, but anyway, we don't want smooth spiralized contours set. So uncheck that. And this is just basically base mode. So get that set up. We will slice the object. And we should get a result that's exactly like we saw in Prusa Slicer. Now I'll go to preview. And there you have it. Now again, you shouldn't see a top. It should basically be a hollow block. And then export this and save it. And then we will print it out. I'm going to print the one that I did from Presa Slicer because that's the one that I use the most, but you can print this one out and I'll show you the math for both. Okay, so while well, this is printing, let me state that you know there are lots of people who disagree with how you do this. You know, this is one of those topics where not everyone kind of agrees on it. I have found that this method is the most reliable for me. You know, again, there are several different ways you can do this, but this is the method that I found that works for me. Okay, so now that we've got this printed, let's go ahead and measure it with our caliper. Now, what we want is 0.45 because we sliced this in Prusa Slicer. So you want to measure each wall and you want to measure it in the middle and do, you know, the top-ish layers. You don't want to go straight up and down but as you can see each one of these is incorrect this is 0.47 so we're off a little bit and this one's 48 go around several times so you know you've got good numbers and then once you get those numbers we'll plug it into our formula and do some math okay so now that we have our values we need to do a little bit of math We'll take each of our sides, which we can see here, and then we need to add those all together. Now, my values are going to be different than your values, so just keep that in mind. But for me, you can see these are the values I took. We add those together, we get a 1.88. Then we average those out by dividing by 4, and we get a 0 0.47. And I'm going for a 0 0.45 because I'm using Prusa Slicer, and that's its default. Now, the actual formula is relatively simple. We just have to take our original extrusion multiplier, which in Prusa Slicer is one, and then multiply that by our extrusion width, which was 0.45, and then divide that by our uh, value we got, which was 0.47. We get a new value of 0.9574, which I would round up to 9.6. Now you could do 957 maybe, but it doesn't need to be that precise because it's going to fluctuate. So I'm just going to go with 96. Now for Cura, it's relatively the same, except we have a, an extra step because Cura does things in percentages. So we have to turn our 100% to a decimal, which gives you a one. So it'd be one multiplied by our extrusion width, which we found was 0.44 and then divide that by what our value was, which is 0.47. So in Cura, I would get a new value, flow value of 0.94, turned into a percentage is 94%. Okay, so now we're back in Prusa Slicer. We're gonna to go to our filament tab, and then we are going to change our extrusion multiplier from one, which is default to our 0.96. And then we will save that out. And you know, I have a filament tab for each of the different filaments I use for each of the different printers that I use. So, I mean, you're 
you know, when it's all said and done, you're going to have a lot of these things. So just keep that in mind. This again is one of the reasons why I really like uh, preset slicer versus other slicers. I mean, Orca slicer, you can do the same thing. Not quite as simple in Cura, but I'll go over that as well. Okay, so now we're back in Cura. Now in here, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing that we did in Prusa Slicer, but it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So Cura doesn't really separate filament from your profile. So it's all really in the profile. And that's not ideal. So what you'd really need is a profile for each filament that you have. And that's, again, not ideal. Um, it doesn't really work very well. Now, luckily, you know, we have all of these wonderful plugins that we can get for Cura um, to fix this situation. So we need to go to our marketplace and then we're going to add material settings. Okay, so in the marketplace, scroll until you see material settings and then install it. Now, unfortunately, my capture software it just will not let me show you the preference settings inside of Cura once this is installed. But if you go to preferences, then go to materials, and then create a custom material, and then go to that custom material, print settings, you can add a flow item here. If you look, there's select settings at the bottom. Just pick flow and then it'll be attached to your material and not your main profile. Okay, so now that we have our flow calibrated, it's a good idea to actually go through the entire process again to verify that everything actually is correct. However, I've stopped doing that, and what I do now is I load up the Orca cube, which you get this, you know, if you have Orca installed, or you can go to printables and, and download it, you know, on its own. But I load up this thing, and it's fantastic for checking whether or not your flow is correct because this little screw will not fit or at least not fit correctly if your flow is off. So I load this thing up and then I actually cut it. There's no point in printing out the whole thing. I just cut it to right above the screw. And you can do that in here just by uh, using the snip tool. Okay, so I've sliced off the top of the cube because there's no point in printing it, you know, the entire thing because I'll end up printing this two or three times. But, this, you know, this saves on the filament. But what you want to do is you want to print this out and then when you're done, the screw itself should go all the way into the base. And there's a little line on the screw that should align with the X on the cube. So it should be, you know, straight. And then that's going to tell you whether or not your flow is proper or not. I don't want to say perfect because it's never going to be perfect, but it should be, you know, close. Now, if it doesn't go straight, you know, that line that's on the screw, then you know that you either have too much flow or not enough flow. And like I said, this is a fantastic tool, fantastic for getting your um, flow calibrated to where it needs to be. Okay, now we're going to print this out. Now, again, you know, you could just print the entire cube. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure if in Cura you can actually cut it like you can inside a process slicer. But, I mean, process slicer makes it really easy to do it. If not, just print the entire cube out. You know, do it once or twice. Uh, it's not a big thing. But it's a fantastic tool. Fantastic tool. Okay, so now that we've got this thing printed, we want to just screw them in. And we look good and we take our screw and we're not trying to use force here you know we're just trying to get it to screw in and then we want that line to align up with the X and then that tells us that we actually have good see right with the X and that means that our flow is calibrated for this filament and again, you're going to need to do this for every filament you have. Okay, so now that we've gone through the entire process of how we get our flow calibrated, or at least how I get my flow calibrated, 
I wanted to take a minute and just talk about an alternative method of doing this. Um, you know, there are, uh, are people out there who say that, you know, what I've just done is the way you should do it. And they recommend you do it this way. So I figured I would just mention it. Again, I don't do it this way. I don't find it accurate at all. Um, but this is what they say to do. So we go basically through the same thing we did before. We're gonna put a cube here, and then we're just gonna lower that cube down to 10 millimeters or so. And then we're just gonna print it just like it is. And then we will compare the top, you know, the surface of the top. And if it's nice and smooth, you know, there's no gaps. If we got gaps, then we need to increase our flow. If there's blobs or, you know, raised levels, then we need to decrease our flow. And you just rinse, repeat, you know, over and over again until you get that nice, smooth finish on the top. Um, again, you know, I, I won't say there's anything wrong with it. It just doesn't work for me. That's why I do not do it this way. But I figured I would mention it, you know, because I'm sure somebody will bring it up. But again, it's an easy process. So, you know, give it a go if you want to try it. Okay, so lastly, you know, since I'm covering alternatives, in Orca Slicer, which I have here, they have a nice calibration section um, that has some really good things in it. One of the items that's here is flow. And when you turn that on, it's going to print something like this. And there are several steps that you have to go through in order to determine whether or not your flow is is correct it's kind of like what i just talked about with the little cube and then you analyze the top of that cube but you'll come here you know in a nutshell you're going to print this out and then you're going to analyze the top surface of each one of these little tabs and then based on the number that's on it you will reduce your flow by a certain amount come in here do this whole step again and then that'll tell you what your flow is Okay, so now that I've shown you that, uh, this is the wiki page for it. And there's a link in Orca Slicer to actually take you here. This wiki, you know, it's great. Uh, it outlines exactly what you're doing, you know, why you're doing it this way, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it's a step-by-step -step process for calibrating flow. I, I've just never liked doing it this way. Um, I've, I just don't get good results doing it this way. So, you know, I figured I'd leave it here for completeness. You know, I've covered four or so different methods for, you know, calibrating your flow here. Um, find one that works for you. You know, just because I do it this way doesn't mean you need to do it that way. Or just because some other person out there says you should do it this way. You know, look at all the various ways. Um, you know, it's kind of like the Orca Cube. That didn't exist before. Um, and now I use it all the time because it's just such a great way to, you know, dial in your, um, your flow and get it so that it, you know, is as close as it can be. Um, and I really like it. I, I get really good results by using it. Anyway, come here, look at this wiki, you know, try this in Orca Slicer if you want to, you know, try something new or different and see if it works for you. You know, again, it doesn't for me, but I'm not you. Anyway. If you like this kind of content, again, please like and subscribe. Um, if nothing else, please hit that like button. You know, it really helps me out because that tells YouTube, hey, send this to more people. But anyway, I hope you have good results with this. I hope you get some use out of this. Um, and as always, happy printing.